Give someone a national book token and who knows where they'll end up. London is a hugely important city and it's the starting point for some really important books for children. We're in Daunt Books in Marrowbourne High Street. It's my favourite bookshop. It's a beautiful bookshop. And the reason it's my favourite bookshop, apart from how handsome it is, is that you can come in here and get the book you need. They have the most amazing children's book section. All the books I could think of that I'd read as a child, that I remembered even distantly, were on these shelves. This little group of books that I've chosen are important to me because I read them as a child, some of them. Um, because um, the writers are important to me, because the stories are brilliant, and because they put a city that I'm so familiar with into a different context, and I find that exciting. Of course, one of the most famous books about London is um, Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens, which I read when I was about 12 or 13. And it's such a famous story about an orphan who finds his way through a series of injustices and, and misplacements into the dark streets of Victorian London. And Dickens, of course, was very concerned about the social problems of his modern London. Although Oliver had enough to occupy his attention in keeping sight of his leader, he could not help bestowing a few hasty glances on either side of the way as he passed along. A dirtier, or more wretched place he had never seen. The street was very narrow and muddy, and the air was impregnated with filthy odours. There were a good many small shops, but the only stock in trade seemed to be heaps of children, who even at that time of night were crawling in and out of the doors or screaming from the inside. Dickens explores a side of London that a lot of people wouldn't have known about, and it's the criminal underworld, and it's poverty, and it's drug addiction, and crime, and it's dark. And London has a really quite shocking personality in this book. He was exposing these truths to his readers, um, and, you know, he wasn't making a lot of it up. There's more than one school of book about London. There are the books that are deeply rooted in the city, and there are the books that afford a child an escape. Above Tier One, above the busy shops of Mayfair and Piccadilly, above Quirk Circus, where the statue of London's saviour stands proudly on its fluted steel column, top tier hangs over the city like an iron crown supported by vast pillars. It is the smallest, highest, and most important of the seven tiers. And though only three buildings stand there, they are the three greatest buildings in London. Between them stands St Paul's, the ancient Christian temple that Quirk re-erected up here when he turned London into a traction city. It is a sad sight now, covered in scaffolding and shored up with props, for it was never meant to move, and London's journeys have shaken the old stonework terribly. Uh, this next book is called The London Eye Mystery, and it's by Siobhan Dowd. It's a detective story, in a sense. A boy called Salim gets into the London Eye, gets into his pod at the London Eye, goes up, goes round, and doesn't get off. And his cousins are watching, and they need to find out where he's gone. And it's a really good story. And in some ways, it's about escape. It's a slice of modern London. I set my first book in London because London is the city that I knew. Um, and to set a story in a place you know is to give yourself a comfortable place to begin. When I was 17 years old, I felt like I discovered Primrose Hill. I worked here for almost 15 years. I knew I wanted to write, but I didn't think that I was equipped. I certainly didn't have a story. And then I met Eileen, who was a wonderful old lady who used to come into the shop. She'd, she'd scoff at the term wonderful old lady, actually. She was, she was quite something. She was fearsome. She was sharp. She was funny. She was clever. 
I was 19 when I first met her, and I thought that old people were old professionally, and she changed my mind about that. And then Eileen died, and her ashes were left in an estate office, Johnny Bucknell's estate office in St George's Mews, across the road from the shop where I worked. And the human being in me thought, what, a, what an odd place for her to, to be left, or for her to want to be left. And the bit of me that wanted to be a writer thought, what a brilliant beginning to a story. The minicab office was up a cobbled mews with little flat houses either side. That's where I first met Violet Park, what was left of her. There was a healing centre next door, a pretty smart name for a place with a battered brown door and no proper door handle and stuck on wooden numbers in the shape of clowns. The three of number 13 was a W stuck on sideways and I thought it was kind of sad and I liked it at the same time. Whenever you ask someone for writing advice, they'll always say to you, write what you know or start with something that you know. And for me, that was a sense of place. And I think for a lot of writers, that's a sense of place. Dickens wrote about the London that he knew. Edith Nesbitt wrote about the London that she knew and used it as a springboard to all kinds of fantasy worlds. So these books haven't informed me in the same way as the city itself has. But they're all part of a, they're part of a group of books that London's inspired and that build up that fictional identity that the city has.